Hey everybody, Chad Wesley Smith here for Juggernaut Train Systems, joined by Dr. Mike Israel. Dr. Mike, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Pretty good. So we're going to talk to you guys today about uh, supplements. Obviously a very popular topic in the uh, in the training community, and I think tends to be a very misunderstood topic. So Dr. Mike is going to lend us his expertise and hopefully clear up some clear up some issues for you. So Dr. Mike, you know, what, what is the real role of supplements in, in the training of an athlete? Yeah, you know, a uh, very good question, and it's actually right in the in the word itself, a supplementary role. Uh, I think a lot of people make the mistake uh, thinking that supplements uh, are some kind of a really important tool to have in training that are of a primary importance. Uh, this is kind of demonstrated. I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, will have fond memories of these experiences. You're training at the gym, and uh, do you do something impressive, or you look impressive, and somebody comes up to you and says, "Hey, man, what supplements are you taking?" And uh, it's funny because as the scientific literature has demonstrated pretty clearly. Supplements are pretty much the last thing you should ever be worried about. So the role of supplements is actually minimal to your training. It can be important, especially because supplements are relatively easy to use, and if you want that extra little bit of improvement, supplements are there, but they probably account for about 5% of the variation in body composition for sure, and probably performance as well. So the role of supplements is when you have the basics right, when you're eating well, when you're training well already, supplements can uh, have a small but significant impact on your performance. But if you're not eating or training well, Supplements aren't going to do, uh, you know, hardly anything at all. So we have to keep that in mind. That's really that people are, are trying to get that entire five percent, that final five percent, yes. but neglecting the first ninety-five. That's right. Percent. Absolutely, absolutely. So what what are some supplements, you know, that have significant scientific backing? The, the supplements that you feel very confident to say really work. Yeah, very good question. So the ones that we feel confident about working have a lot of literature in support of them. They have a pretty overwhelming amount of literature in support of them. So it's like maybe they've had 100 studies done on them and 95 of those studies or 90 of those studies say they work really well. Five or 10 say maybe not. And just statistical error for the most part. So a lot of literature, confirmational literature, and also a long history of use in, in actual real communities of athletes. So we don't just recommend stuff that's, oh, you know, scientists think it works, and athletes turns out some weird quirk or some application just actually doesn't have any enhanced amount of performance. There are probably about five legit supplements that actually work for sure. Whey protein works really well. Lysine carbohydrate supplements, things like powdered Gatorade, some of the more advanced carb powders work pretty well. Casein protein works pretty well as a long-term, a long digestive protein that you can take between long lapses and meals or at night. Creatine works really well, pretty well uh, established support. It's not a huge difference. Some people say, oh, I can't feel my creatine working. You're not supposed to, okay? Uh, it's a long-term sort of thing that builds muscle uh, over a while and builds work capacity over a while. And uh, lastly, stimulants work pretty well. So things that have caffeine in them, taurine, or a variety of other uh, stimulants seem to enhance work capacity pretty well. They decrease hunger pretty well, they enhance mental focus well, especially if you're on a hypocaloric diet. So those, are the, those five supplement classes are really the ones that do most of the work. And if you notice, there's a bunch of combinations of supplements, like a meal replacement chase. It's usually a combination of whey and casein protein with some kind of carbs in it. So a lot of supplements are, that are still effective can be combinations of those. If you take all those out, you're left with very little room of actually effective supplements. And I'm not aware of any that are really hardcore effective but that don't include at least one of those ingredients. So that brings us to the next question. You know, to, the, to the other end of that, supplements that are very touted you know, to be important or you know, extremely effective but don't have the, uh, the studies and research backing them up. What yeah. are some of those? Yeah, so like the just very uh, popular blunder supplements, basically. Yeah. And, you know, glutamine has to top the list, I feel. Glutamine has been touted by people for years, and there's an interesting relationship. It's, uh, it's uh, to the extent that it's been touted by people as working, it's inversely related to how the literature says it works. So they've been really, really trying to prove that glutamine does something well, uh, something good for muscle growth, and they've just come up short, and we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of studies on glutamine, and just multiple literature reviews say glutamine does... Eh, it might have some immune effects in certain immune compromised individuals. If you're immune compromised, you're probably not training with weights a whole lot. So glutamine, we're not really, really sure what it does. There are advanced creatine uh, powders out there, different formulations of creatine, ethyl ester, uh, creatine hydrochloride. The, the jury's still out on hydrochloride, but ethyl ester uh, is a very good uh, research that actually doesn't even uh, come out of the blood and go into the cells. There's some good research that says it doesn't leave the GI tract much and go into the blood to begin with. So a good amount of hydrate's a good way to go, but these advanced creatine potions are supposedly say, you know, our new creatine, zero bloating. Like, yeah, if it's zero bloating, there might not actually be any creatine in there that works. <laughs> So advanced creatine uh, powders, um, some of the more advanced protein powders, there's a whey uh, hydrolysate uh, and whey isolate. 
that only work a couple of percentage points possibly better than whey protein, but they're touted as completely revolutionary. So that's more of a... Compared to concentrate. Compared to whey concentrate, yeah, and that's more of like an exaggeration thing that is a falsehood. You can certainly get whey hydro and it absolutely works. But the question is, do you want to spend $80 on five pounds of whey hydro or $35 on five pounds of whey concentrate? If you're strapped for cash, if you're like most people and you're at least somewhat money concerned, yeah, whey hydro might just not be a good idea. So... And then one uh, that you kind of ranted about a little bit on Facebook the other day, uh, if you guys don't follow Mike or are friends with him or whatever, he posts a lot of really good information and it's usually pretty entertaining, but uh, was leucine. Yeah, so leucine was initially, it's, a, it's a, one of the essential amino acids and it's one of the uh, BCAAs and it, it was originally uh, very promising in the animal research. So essentially if you give leucine to rats and mice, it works pretty much as well as anabolic steroids do in rats and mice. People got really excited about this, understandably so, because most of the pathways in rats and mice are very similar to those in humans. It was administered to humans with basically meh results, to put it in a less than academic way. So uh, it, in, in the long-term literature, there's some good literature in humans saying that leucine can actually enhance anabolism if you take it in one dose over the course of one day. They've done some literature where leucine has been taken over the course of several weeks, and that's actually pretty equivocal. We can't quite conclude yet that leucine is a good idea to take a scoop of leucine with every meal or between meals or with your shake. We can't quite tell as scientists yet if that's going to be an effective long-term approach. The good news is leucine is dirt cheap, so you can try it out yourself. It probably doesn't have the kind of effect that you can tell yourself if it's working, but if you want to ensure you're doing everything possible, you go ahead and put some leucine in your shakes. Uh, the cost is that leucine maybe tastes worse than whatever they feed you in hell. So uh, there's that. So if you feel like, oh, I have to take leucine, I'm missing out. Don't feel like that because we're certainly not sure you're missing out. There's a good chance you're not. Uh, so leucine is one of those, eh, we're not really sure yet. And people have been touting it because they keep referencing the animal studies and the acute human studies, but the long-term human studies really put a big question mark there. I personally, you know, if you have the money and you have the time to use leucine and you maybe a leucine connoisseur and you treat it like a fine wine, oh yes, this is 1998 Pharma Labs leucine, the best, <laughs> it was a good year, leucine it up. But if you feel like you're missing out and you feel like you should take it, you only have so much money for supplements, don't bother with leucine. I can't recommend it yet as of this time. And the, the final thing I want to ask, what, what should people kind of be wary of as they see different products being touted as, you know, this game changing, like, you know, going to affect, have these huge effects on their training. Uh, what, what are some things you see out there that people really need to be wary of in that respect? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of exactly what you said. The number one thing to know about supplements is that they are supplementary to a good diet and good training and that they are minimally yet significantly effective. That means they have some effect, it's a good effect, but it's not life-changing or revolutionary. Most supplements you won't notice a thing other than caffeine, which you actually have a psychological reaction to. So, uh, for example, if you start taking a decent whey protein, just something you bought at GNC, you know, uh, Optimum Nutrition Gold Standard Whey, I think we've all taken that stuff before, great stuff. You take it for a couple of months and it, you don't feel crazy vascular pumps and you're not just tearing weights in half in the gym, you haven't had roid rage on the front desk lady yet, punch her in the face, you're like, man, that just must not be the kind of whey protein I need. And then you see a commercial that says, new no, Russian bear whey protein, it'll t t turn you into a psychopath, you'll go to jail forever, <laughs> that's what I need. Like, that's probably not going to happen from whey protein. Okay, so understand that when you're taking supplements, it's not going to be a huge difference, it's not going to be a huge deal. And any company or person making claims like this will revolutionize your training, unless they're selling you like really high quality growth hormone or something, which is probably also fake in that regard, uh, then it's probably just not going to revolutionize a whole lot. So uh, understand that supplements are a minor yet effective and they're not supposed to feel like anything crazy. Take the ones that work. It'll be slow and steady gains for you. If somebody says, hey, you're taking the wrong whey protein, if it's whey protein, you're taking the right whey protein. There's not gonna be some kind of miracle gains you're gonna get switching products. So uh, the, the last thing would be that I see a lot of products, particularly in the CrossFit community, being promoted as recovery products, but then when I look at them, they have you know seven grams of carbs uh, per serving in them, or maybe you know 15 total calories, and they're being, had it as the recovery drink, or you know, or just how are products like that gonna help, or rather not help? Yeah, they're gonna rather training? not help is yeah. the answer. 
Yeah, so recovery is mediated primarily by two nutritional factors, calories and carbohydrates, probably in that order. Sometimes in reverse order, if you're talking about acute changes, if you have an AM workout and a PM workout, you hit a big AM workout, what do you need to eat between those two workouts to recover? The answer probably starts with carbohydrates and has a big deal, or big role of calories to play. Protein is actually an anabolic nutrient, but it doesn't really enhance the recovery in the sense of recovery from enhanced performances. It makes you better over the long term, but recovery is not really a big issue there. So if a supplement just has a little bit of protein, it's not a recovery supplement. If a supplement has a high amount of carbohydrates, if it has some decent electrolytes and good hydration, uh, then or the plant is consumed with plenty of water or it has water in it, then it could be a good recovery supplement, especially if you have plenty of calories in there. If your supplement is recovery supplement, it does not have a lot of carbohydrates and it does not have a lot of calories, it does not recover you. And then it's just called recovery supplement, which looks kind of cool. Sorry for the bad news. So thank you very much, Dr. Mike, for uh, clarifying those issues for us. Uh, make sure that you guys go and check out The Renaissance Diet that uh, Mike is the author of, and he's got a lot of great articles there on JTSStrength.com. Thank you very much.